Hello and welcome back to a regular series where I explore frequently asked questions related to microservices. And today's question is a real doozy. How big should microservices be? Where to start? Well, a good place would be a definition used by James Lewis when talking about the size of microservices. James was one of the authors of the original article about microservices over at Martin Fowler's website. James would say a microservice should be big enough to fit inside his head. Of course, that's not terribly useful to many of us because how big exactly is James's head if it's not too personal a question to ask? We can't carry it around and compare it against things. What he was talking about, of course, is the idea that a microservice should be small enough that conceptually it fits in his head, that he could understand the scope of what it does. But that's not necessarily a comparable measure. We can't say, you know, what might be understandable for me isn't necessarily what's understandable for you. So is James's head the ultimate measure of how big a microservice should be? I took my own stab at defining size in the book Building Microservices. There I talked about this idea that a microservice should be small enough and no smaller, which is a very vague statement indeed. Chris Richardson, who wrote the uh, Microservices Patterns book, has another definition he shared with me once. He said a microservice size should really relate to the size of the interface and that the smaller the interface that a microservice exposes to other things, the better. Uh, so the idea of the size there relates to its interactions with other things. This in turn, of course, riffs off earlier work done by David Parnas back in the early 1970s, where he was looking at ways of sort of finding module boundaries. And he uh, sort of uh, came up with this technique called information hiding, the idea that we should hide as much information behind a module boundary as possible. This in turn uh, give way to things like encapsulation. And indeed, when looking at microservices, this idea of hiding information is very useful in terms of reducing coupling between services. The problem again, though, is how big an interface should be. It should be small. Smaller than what? How do we measure that? Is that a number of methods we expose, a number of types? I think people have always wanted like some concrete number, some way that they could run a, a microservice code base through and come out with an answer. Yes, it's small enough or no, it's too small or no, it's too big. This is often, I think, why people say, why can't we measure things in terms of lines of code? The issue here, of course, is that that's not necessarily going to make a lot of sense. Different programming languages have different levels of expressiveness. What might take me 15 lines of Clojure code might take me 30 lines of Java code. I'm not saying that Clojure is better or worse than Java, just that it's more expressive and therefore it can, you know, it can detail more ideas in a single line of code than other comparable languages. So that lines of code thing doesn't necessarily make sense if you're looking and trying to compare across different languages. Some problem spaces are more algorithmically complex than others. Creating something as simple as a shopping basket, where I basically put something in the basket, take it out, look at what's in the basket. You know what? That should be something I could do in less than 100 lines of code. Could I do the same thing when trying to work out the risk of, you know, enrolling a new customer when I'm looking at their accounts and all their interactions and saying, oh, this looks fraudulent, it doesn't look fraudulent. That's not the kind of thing that's going to take me like 50 lines of code. That might require a lot more careful thought. So different problem spaces might need more code than others. Does that mean that they can't be microservices? I don't think that's true either. I think ultimately the concept of size is a little bit of a red herring. And I think if we had our time over again and went back and looked at the definition of microservices, we'd probably try and take out the word micro and come up with some other you know, definition there because micro and makes people fixate too much on the size. And the size thing isn't necessarily a unit of comparison that we can use to say, are we doing well or not? Ultimately, your concept of size will vary based on your experience and your skills. Let's look at a concrete example. So this chart is actually for a presentation by a company called Gilt. So Gilt uh, were a fashion retailer startup. Uh, originally, they created their application using uh, Ruby on Rails. Pretty good choice, actually, for uh, just getting an, an application out of the door quickly, especially when a more simple monolithic topology. Over time, they decided we want microservices. And so they started, well, what they actually said was we'll scale our team. And so we want to use microservices as a way of enabling us to add more developers. What we see from this graph is a fairly slow and steady pace of change. Uh, this sort of red line here that I'm highlighting shows the number of microservices over time. With a chart like this, people often tend to fixate in the top right. They say, oh, look, they've got 300 services. That must be good. The more interesting thing for me is always the journey on the way there. 
And what you see is a very, very slow and steady growth until they sort of hit this inflection point where you get a much quicker increase in the number of services being added. That's actually a very, very common pattern. But think about this. If you go and talk to Gilt in, as they were in, say, 2014, which is at the end where this, graph, uh, this chart ends, and you say, how big is a microservice for you? You'd get one answer. If you ask Gilt of, say, June in 2010, back when they still only had a, less than 10 services, and you said, how big should a microservice be? You'd likely get a very, very different answer. The reality is, as you get better at creating services, you make it easier to create a service, make it easier to manage those services, understand how they're behaving, it becomes much quicker and easier for you to create a new service. That means it makes it easier for you to take some functionality and push it into something new. As a result, your services will end up being smaller in scope and you'll end up having more of them. If you're in an organization or you've got where, you, where it's a lot harder to create, say, infrastructure to run your services, it's still a lot of manual work, creation of a service is gonna be much more expensive to you, in which case your services will tend to be larger and you'll have fewer of them. In my experience, fixating on size isn't actually that useful. It doesn't really mean anything to you. A much more telling question is, how many services can you manage? The vast majority of the pain, suffering and anguish that comes from running microservices is related to the interactions between them. And those things become worse as you have more of them. I've used the analogy before, but when you're thinking about adopting microservices, think of it like you're turning a dial. As you turn that dial up and you have more microservices, you get more benefits of them and maybe the opportunity to take advantage of that architectural choice. But you're probably also magnifying all the pain associated with building what is fundamentally a distributed system. It's for every organisation to decide where's our happy place on that dial. Turn that dial up to where you get to a point where you think, yeah, that's right for us and that's what we need to worry about. Don't worry about comparing yourself to somebody else. That's not important. What's important is what works for you. And don't worry overly about what other people think about how big should a microservice be. Be much more focused on what makes sense for you and your organization. If five microservices that are quite large work, don't worry about it. Don't worry about having to have 50 microservices or 500 or 1500. Find the balance between those things that make sense. You're in charge of your own dial, right? You turn that up to the point where it makes sense for you. So worry less about size, maybe worry a bit more about what you're doing with them. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when new videos appear. You might also be interested in exploring some more of these ideas in my books, Building Microservices and uh, Monolith to Microservices. I'm going to put some links down in the description uh, along with a link over to my website where you've got lots more free videos and blog posts and all sorts of other things that you could watch. Thanks so much.